Welcome to this webinar on Open Beam Squared, the European Project Management Methodology. My name is Lex van der Helm and I am Capgemini's Academy Lead Trainer on Project Management and closely involved in delivering training courses on Beam Squared to the uh, institutions within the European Union. Um, it's my pleasure today to take you on a journey of discovery into Beam Squared. Um, if you have any questions on what I'm talking about, uh, you can ask your question directly underneath on your screen and I'll try to answer them uh, straight away or at the end of the webinar. Uh, if we lack the time to do it at the end, uh, don't worry. I will answer your questions via mail so that you're sure to get an answer. Um, what am I going to talk about today? Today's webinar will start by presenting you with some context so that you can place the things I'm going to talk about a little bit better. Uh, and then we'll take you uh, through the past to the present and after talking about some details on Beam Square into the future of what Open Beam Square will hopefully bring. And then at the end, summary and, and questions you might have after my uh, webinar. Let's get started by giving you some context. Context about Europe mainly. Um, and Europe, uh, do I talk about a continent? Uh, a continent of 50 or 51, or depending on who you believe, um, countries um, or, or something else? Um, are you talking about the Eurozone? Contain 19 countries, uh, you can economic uh, trade uh, area, or am I talking about Schengen, uh, countries without shared borders, 22 countries? No, I'm talking about the European Union, 28 countries, uh, a unique economic and political union between 28 uh, countries that cover most, most of the continent. Uh, the predecessor of the current European Union was created shortly after the Second World War as a uh, European um, um, organization for steel and coal uh, with the idea that if we can trade freely we will be less prone to start to uh, fight and go to war amongst ourselves. Um, and out of that idea has grown today's union of 28 countries, um, a political union, but still with the idea of free trade and, and the free traffic of people and goods uh, at its heart, at its essence. Um, such an organization is, is difficult to, to manage. Uh, it's a complicated uh, political organization and it requires a great deal of effort uh, to be effectively uh, structured and organized and controlled. Um, the landscape has grown uh, for, this com for this purpose is pretty complex at first glance. I've shown you uh, a couple of the institutions that we need for the European Union. And if you see a head of state uh, talking about Brexit on the screen, it's often a European Council summit talking about the political future of Europe. But there is also a European Parliament for which you can vote next month. Uh, please remember to do so, which is your direct representation um, overseeing uh, the decisions made in Europe by the European Council um, and passing into law the propositions uh, that are made by the European Commission. The European Commission is the operative branch, so to speak, um, of the uh, European Union. There are many other uh, institutes and agencies like the European Central Bank, uh, the Committee of the Regions, each representing uh, special interest to the European Union or uh, tasks with specific areas of interest. If we zoom in on the European uh, Union's agencies, you'll see many like Eurotom, Europol that you might have heard of that support uh, the workings of the European Union. But the biggest one of all is the European Commission. And it's for me the most interesting because that's where we find uh, the birthplace of Beam Squared. Um, the European Commission has 28 commissioners, one for each country. 
Um, it has policy departments, executive agencies, and service departments. 53 um, departments in total, um, employing roughly 32,000 people uh, in Brussels, Luxembourg, and other places across Europe and even outside of Europe. Um, these departments and agencies support the work of the European Commission in their daily work uh, and help public administrations in member countries be more effective in what they do. Um, the policy departments um, are departments tasked with uh, European taxation affairs like Duxert, um, scientific research like DARC um, or DIGIT. And DIGIT is uh, related to information technology and it's there where we find um, a strong focus on project management. And a focus on project management that is shared by the current president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. Um, he came into term uh, 2014 after the previous elections and he had an ambitious program. And he realized that in order to deliver that ambitious program, the European Commission needs to work in projects and have an effective way of delivering quickly and effectively uh, the things they want to achieve. So his idea was to organize a new commission around project teams. So a strong focus within the commission on working in projects. And it's in that context that we can look at what has happened um, in the past that has brought us PM squared. And uh, PM squared is where open PM scare comes from. Uh, so that's logically where our journey into the past will start at the birthplace of PM squared. Uh, and the origins of PM squared as a project management methodology can be found in 2008 uh, when it was first launched um, within Digit. Around 2010, uh, training courses started to be organized, introducing people into PM Square, and it was used mainly within Digit for IT projects. Later, um, with the first release of a PM Square guide in 2012, um, the methodology became wi more widely used, and especially in 2013, a second edition of the guide was released and a, a PM squared certification was launched. Um, and that was also um, key into getting uh, PM squared endorsed as the go-to project management methodology within the European Commission. Um, uh, up to that moment, there was no standard uh, project management methodology being used. Each department, each agency free to choose their own uh, course in that respect. In 2014, um, recognizing the trend toward more agile approaches, Beam Squared was released, uh, was enriched by the release of Agile at uh, EC, building on the foundations of the traditional approach to projects embedded in Beam Squared. A sort of add-on was developed, allowing uh, complex um, projects in highly bureaucratic environments to still use Agile approaches. Um, and Agile at EC allows projects to successfully apply an Agile approach to doing projects in that context, provided uh, in, within the structure provided by PM Squared. 2015, yet again, a new version of the PM Square Guide, version 2.5. And we see that the methodology is being um, embraced outside of the Commission by other institutions, such as the European Central Bank. Um, 2016 is a key moment in the development of PM Squared, from my opinion, uh, because it marked the release of an open version of PM Square. Up till that point, PM Squared was, you could say, the best kept secret of the European Commission. Uh, through from 2016, um, as a way of giving back to Europe, uh, contributing to a higher level of project management maturity across Europe, uh, the Commission decided to uh, make PM Squared available to everyone. 
within the Commission, within the European Union, but also outside. Um, from that moment on, there was work on two separate editions of the PM Square Guide, the PM Square Guide itself and an open guide. Um, but in 2019, luckily, uh, it was decided to release uh, one consolidated new edition of the guide, uh, the version 3.0 of the uh, PM Square Guide. So both PM Squared and Open PM Squared use this uh, guide as their foundation. Um, that brings us to the present of PM squared and open PM squared. Um, PM squared uh, version 3.0 is supported uh, by a strong, uh, well described methodology, uh, a lively, active community of uh, experts around PM squared, and a training program, a well defined, uh, solid training program, which caters to a lot of needs um, and a certification process. If we zoom in on the methodology, um, we see that the methodology is described in the guide I just showed you, uh, but there are also artifact templates describing the management products you need to control and manage your projects throughout the life cycle. Um, there are descriptions of relevant tools and technique uh, you can use as a project manager. Uh, and there are also versions of these tools and techniques available for agile projects and even for portfolio management. Um, there is a study case which describes, which, which shows you the use of PM squared for a real project. So you can see how uh, PM squared works um, when applied to a real project. There is even um, a website available that shows you uh, get more examples and more supporting documents um, around the methodology of PM squared. There is also a community of experts PM squared um, within Digit, uh, veteran project managers that can help organizations within the European Union running projects using PM squared or customizing PM uh, squared to their organization. Um, uh, this is a paid service which helps embed PM squared within the European Union. There is also a training program. It uh, has a number of tracks. It has a, a basic foundation track of five days of training, taking you through uh, the content of uh, PM squared and how it's applied. There is an advanced track of again five days, and there is also an um, Agile at PM of Agile at EC a track of five days of training, all separated in one to two day modules. Um, there are also some courses on specialist topics and courses for uh, management, for heads of units, heads of sectors, and they last no more than half a day, but they will give you a quick insight into specific aspects of PM squared within the European Union. Fourthly. There is also the certification on PM squared, available to everyone within, or at least most of the people within the European Union. Um, there are three levels of certification. You can become PM squared certified after taking the basic co uh, training courses and passing an exam. Um, there is the possibility to become a PM squared practitioner uh, that acquire, uh, requires five additional days of training and also requires you to show that you have uh, mastered and successfully applied PM Square to a real project. So it's more than just a theoretical exercise, that certification. Thirdly, there is also an Agile uh, certification available, again based on five days of training followed by an exam. Um, up to now, around 1,000 people uh, have taken that foundation exam. Um, and if you ask them how they liked it, um, the results are very uh, satisfying. Um, of the people certified, 95% say that PM squared contributes to their project success. And almost all, 98%, would recommend uh, others to, uh, to follow the certification process. So I think that that kind of shows the value of uh, what is being done within the European Union 
when it comes to Bream Square. But if you're not within the uh, employed within the European Union, that is not accessible to you. Then you um, have to look at Open Bream Square. The ambition of Open Beam Squared is to offer one common project management methodology open to all EU institutions, member states, contractors, and EU citizens. Um, it was launched, as I said, in 2016. In 2018, we had a large conference in Brussels, uh, and we had over 500 participants from all over Europe, and a lot of people um, independent contractors, people from organizations supplying to the European Union who expressed their, their strong interest in, uh, in getting to know Open Beam Squared. Um, Open Beam Squared has a foundation. Uh, there is no formal community of experts, but there is a community of uh, interested parties. There are uh, third party training available. And of course, there is the the same methodology available as there is to PM squared. The PM squared open edition is comprised of uh, exactly the same guide, the same one, and the artifact templates that have been adopted for public use. And the good news is it's in public domain, it's free. You can download it for free and, and start to use it for your project. Um, so that brings us to uh, the point where it might be interesting to get some details. What, what, what is PM squared? Uh, it's a project management methodology, but how is it different from what I'm used to? Uh, you might be familiar with PMBOK or PRINCE2 or other project management methodologies. So what's the added value of using PM squared? Well, let me show you a little bit about the details of PM squared. You saw this picture before. It's a picture of a Greek temple. Um, and it has a, a foundation. It has a strong foundation uh, summarized in the methodology guide. It has four strong pillars held together by a PM squared mindset. Um, a PM squared mindset allowing for both control and agility uh, that allows an effective delivery of solutions and benefits uh, for your project. And for me, there are straight away three key takeaways. In this, uh, in this approach to project management methodologies. First of all, there is the PM squared mindset. I've seen a lot of projects using a methodology following it to the letter. And, um, and PM squared mindset urges you to think about how you apply it. Uh, apply it with the results in mind and not following the procedures. Um, uh, Apply it pragmatically um, as a tool and not as an objective itself. So that's one. The second one is the balance uh, between control and agility. Um, you'll want your project to be adaptable to things that happen uh, around you. Typical projects, especially within the European Union, take a number of years. And in, those, in that time, things will change. Your project needs to be adaptive, to be... Uh, remain relevant um, to the so those circumstances. But at the same time, you're looking for control of your project. You want to uh, keep in control of the time and the money uh, you spend in your project. So finding a balance between those two um, is, is interesting and challenging. So putting that uh, center and front in your methodology is great. And the third uh, takeaway for me is that it's not about just delivering outputs, not delivering a result, but de effective delivery of solutions and benefits. And we want to spend taxpayers' money invested in projects that help us bring about change, but the project is not um, the objective of the exercise. The objective is to make lasting change measurable uh, by the achievement of actual benefits that we're looking for. So, if your project management encompasses uh, that aspect of achieving benefits, I think that's great, I think that's essential, and I think that's one of the key elements that Beam Squared has to offer you. I said a solid foundation, and you might recognize stuff. Stuff like 
things from PM Bog Guide, for those of you schooled by PMI. Those of you certified in PRINCE2 might recognize special specifics uh, from that approach to project planning. But there are also all sorts of other elements included in PM squared as well. Things from CMMI, from Tempo, from ISO 21500, um, all best practices uh, relevant to project management have been incorporated where relevant into the foundation of PM squared. On that foundation, we built um, our guide and the guide contains um, uh, is the basis for four pillars. The first pillar is PM squared governance. And those of you familiar with PRINCE2 might recognize um, the, the, the two sides of the picture here. Um, as PRINCE2, uh, PM squared distinguishes between a requester or business site and the supplier site or the provider site of the project. Um, if you focus in your project on the delivery of um, not outputs but outcome that helps the business achieve benefits, bringing both the solution provider and the requester side together in the project is very strong, if not essential. Um, to make that work, um, the Beam Squared Governance has a project owner on the requester side and a solution provider on the provider side who together give direction to the project and are part of the project steering committee. Also part of the project steering committee are the traditional project manager role, all familiar with, but also the business manager from the business side of the project. They, together in collaboration and communication, make sure that the project is managed uh, effectively as possible. Uh, they coordinate uh, the input on the one hand of the business implementation group, on the other side from the project core team uh, into the project, the performing layer of the project. Um, the project steering committee coordinates um, and is the linking pin to the appropriate governing body, which might be named differently in different institutions, who um, is responsible for the business direction of the project. Um, so that's the first pillar of PM squared. The second pillar is a phased approach to projects. Um, that might also be quite familiar to you. And most projects, management methodologies have such a phased approach. And that's logical because a project is uncertainty by nature. And what that phased approach to a project allows you to do is to stepwise reduce that uncertainty. So the first phase in your project, the initiating phase in PM squared, uh, examines the problem we're going to solve and it examines possible solutions and it lets you pick the one that you're willing to invest further in. The second phase of your project is the planning phase, helping you establish an answer to the two eternal questions your project owner always has. When will it be finished? And what will it cost? So that's what the planning phase tries to do. Working from the scope of the desired solution to deciding how are we going to run our project in an efficient and effective manner and when will we be finished and when will we deliver the outputs you need in the business to uh, achieve the outcomes you're looking for. The third phase is what it's all about, it's the actual delivery of the project deliverables, the execution phase. Um, that's where most of the money in your project is spent, but hopefully in, in a good way, because you have done uh, those two previous phases. The final phase in PM squared is the closing phase of the project. That's where you make sure that everything ends up where it needs to be, in the hands of the business, who can turn the outputs you have developed into actual outcomes that help you generate benefits for the organization. It also allows you to take uh, a step back and evaluate how your process has gone so that you can learn from it and, and learn lessons that might benefit you in the future. Each phase is uh, divided by a formal decision-making point, a phase gate. 
that helps ensure that you um, actually have received enough insight to take an informed decision to progress to the next phase of your project. So that's the second pillar. Brings me to the third uh, pillar of our PM squared model. Um, processes. Uh, PM squared is a, a process model for running a project. Uh, so you need processes for managing risk, for delivery acceptance, for managing quality in your project, because you're running a temporary organization and you need to know who's responsible for doing what, when. Um, so PM Squared offers you either in the guide or in the templates for the ver various plans, uh, detailed descriptions of possible activities to include um, in, in the management of your project. Um, and it also connects those activities to roles from the governance model. So by using a Rusky matrix, you know when using Beam Squared who is responsible for doing what, when. Um, that's the third pillar. The fourth and final pillar of Beam Squared are the artifacts of Beam Squared. Similar to management products in Prince2, uh, it's the the, the, those are the elements that you need to manage and control your project throughout its whole life cycle. And, and I realize that you cannot read all the names of the artifacts uh, in the slide, um, but that's not the point. The point is to show that there are quite a few, uh, but also that some of them are surrounded by a dotted line, and that's because they're not mandatory, they're optional. Um, so if you actually look at the mandatory or required artifacts, it's, it's quite a limited number. Um, and PM Squared offers detailed templates for each, making filling them in, tuning them, tailoring them for your project generally to a breeze. Um, and it's a great thing for PM Squared because it allows you to uh, make PM squared flexible and it can be applied thereby can be applied to projects small or large, simple or complex. So four pillars. Tying those pillars together, the PM squared mindset. Um, because it's not in following the process. It's um, transcending that uh, process flow, uh, looking at the state of mind you should have when trying to successfully run a project. Remain not uh, focused on delivering your outputs on a date, but achieving the actual outcomes and benefits you're looking for. Um, so that's the PIM squared mindset. Finally, um, in PIM squared is important also the fact that you can tailor it and customize it. You can tailor it to fit the need of your organization. Um, you might have established prior way of working and you need to align PIM square um, and you might find that your project is smaller, larger, simpler, complex uh, than others uh, and you need to customize the method. But it's important that you do it with respect for the methodology, with understanding, um, so that you find a balance um, of the control that you gain by adding something against the effort that it requires from a project management perspective. So try to eliminate waste from the, uh, when you apply the methodology, but respect its integrity. That brings me to the future, the future of, uh, of Open Beam Square. Um, and I think it's a bright future. Uh, and let me explain to you why I think it's a bright future. Uh, it's a bright future because there is a wide interest um, in the Open Beam Square methodology. It's a mature methodology, well established, ripened, gone through a number of iterations. It's future proof by embracing and encompassing an approach to a more agile way of working. Um, it's a bright future because currently uh, across Europe, people are working on translating Open Beam Square into uh, their native language. Uh, making it available in, in all the languages of Europe. And there is an evolving ecosystem of parties, of individuals, training organizations, interest in, in developing uh, Open PM Square. Um, 
So for the first time, there is a single unified project management methodology freely available across Europe uh, to all. So that's why I think that Open Beam Square has a bright future. Uh, in summary, uh, it's a mature project management methodology rooted in well-established approaches. Um, it's well embedded within EUU institutions. It has a solid backbone of knowledge, training and certification. Um, and it has all the trimmings uh, a mature project management methodology needs. Um, it's available in the public domain and it's available to all. All right. Means that it's time for me to go to questions. Um, one of the questions is, where can I download the PM Squared Open Edition? Well, um, one of the things that's available on Open Beam Square is an excellent website. Um, I think the link will be uh, accessible through, uh, through our own website. If you go there, we'll make sure that you can find the link to Open Beam Square, um, where you can download the guide, uh, download the templates, and also participate in the effort uh, of adapting uh, Open Beam Square into the future. Well, those, that was the question I had so far. Uh, any other questions uh, that you might have, feel free to drop me an email or send them in uh, here, and I'll try to answer them uh, to you personally via mail. And I hope to see you soon in the future when we talk a little bit more about the details of uh, Open Beam Square. Thank you very much.